Full disclosure up front, this was originally an April Fool's video that got pushed back and is now my 50,000 subscriber special. Huzzah! So don't take this video seriously, it's just for goofy fun. It is not validation to storm the nearest Chuck E. Cheese and kiss the rat. Kissing the rat will lead to an immediate expulsion from society. Thank you. There's been many unanswered questions that have held up the mysteries in Five Nights at Freddy's. What really happened with the Bite of 87? What was the name of the crying child? What is the identity of the one you shouldn't have killed? And most importantly, what's in the box? But I can't answer those questions, so instead I will be answering one that can be solved through logic and deduction. Which animatronic would be the best and worst to smooch? Don't lie, you thought about this at least once. Whether it be from seeing the title of this video, or seeing an uncomfortable maw of teeth being shoved up by the screen, you've considered something of the like. So today, we're going to try to narrow down a clear and concise ranking. This is the official animatronic smooching guide, folks. Now, this isn't just going to be your typical smash or pass video. We're ranking these animatronics on six very important factors to decide on how kissable these bots are. It's not just looks, there's other factors involved. And here are these factors. Do they have lips? That would be the kissability. Can they bite? How dangerous is their mouth? Will they bite? Their aggression. Anything gross or toxic? Health hazard. Sympathetic backstory? Do they deserve a kiss? And are they cute? Or cool or pretty, something to replace that. Each factor or lack of one awards two points, with some wiggle room if it seems fitting. So the highest score is 12 and the lowest is zero. Also, make it clear that I'm talking about the animatronic characters, not the missing children, ghost kids, or any of that. Technically, they are separate characters. Because of this, I'm not going to give sympathetic backstory points on just being possessed by ghosts. They have to have something more specific. We will only be covering game animatronics this time around and not book exclusive. So, with that all laid out, let's begin. Freddy Fazbear. He's the leader of the gang and the titular face of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Freddy's personality has always been a little on the light side, but he has been a formidable foe ever since the very beginning. Does he have lips? No, unfortunately. Can he bite? From the size of his mouth and the hinge of his jaw, yes, Freddy can bite. However, with his plushy mouth and tiny endoskeleton jaws, he probably doesn't have that vicious of a bite unless you stick your arm in there. Will he bite? Yes, Freddy is aggressive. Anything gross or toxic? Well, FNAF 1 mentions a rank smell and leakage coming from out of the animatronics. So, yes. Finally, sympathetic backstory. Well, since we're not counting the baseline, I'm a possessed animatronic thing, I would say no. Now, is Freddy cute? Freddy's cute enough, so I'll give him full points for that. Adding this all up, Freddy gets a 5. I think that's a good starting point to have Freddy be a good average, even if it's on the lesser side of average because Freddy would be an awkward kiss that involves the smell of death and the possibility that he might gum at your face. Not a pleasant smooch at all. But as we'll learn in the future, that's not the worst kind of smooch. Bonnie, Freddy's right-hand rabbit and the bass player of the band. Bonnie might be the most aggressive of the band, coming after his prey first, but he is portrayed in some media to be the chilled and laid-back one. Does he have lips? No. Can he bite? Yes, and he has the same problem as Freddy. Will he bite? Oh yeah. The second you start your shift, Bonnie's bolting for the office. He'd bite in a heartbeat. Anything gross or toxic? Child lose. Sympathetic backstory, same as Freddy. Thankfully, Bonnie is also cute in an animatronic rabbit sort of way. I would give Bonnie the same score as Freddy, just to be fair. A healthy five. Basically, imagine Freddy's stinky, awkward, possibly dangerous kiss, but not having the bragging rights to say, I kissed the face of Freddy Fazbear's pizza. Now we get on to Chica, Freddy's left-hand chick and a food-loving lady of the group. She has a beak, but no lips. And she too can bite. In fact, with Chica's beakish face, I would say she is more effective at biting than Freddy and Bonnie. At least, she could get you closer to the endo teeth. But I still would keep her bite closer to Freddy's and Bonnie's scoring, since later we'll be running into some really dangerous bites. In the case of toxicity, Chica has something much worse than just decay going on. Help Wanted tells us that not only does Chica get rotting food stuff in and on her, but she's also crawling with roaches and has to be routinely sprayed with poison. Yikes. Sympathetic backstory. Do the roaches count? 
at least Chica would classify as a cutie. So I would give Chica a 4, the problem here being her more dangerous mouth design and the fact that she's just so gnarly. A kiss with Chica would likely involve her either literally pecking you or accidental roach consumption. So nah, she's lucky that it was just one point less. Now on to Foxy, the original fan favorite out of order pirate themed fox. He'll get his hook into you. No lips again, and the ability to bite, and worse still, Foxy looks to have the gnarliest bite of the group. However, will he bite? Now, if we were just talking in FNAF 1 where his jump scare involves sliding in but not biting, he might have gotten a half off on the aggression scale, but later games show this is sort of a fluke. Foxy can and will attack. He has the same decay problem as Freddy and Bonnie's. However, Foxy is an out-of-order and broken animatronic, hiding behind his curtain in Pirate's Cove. That's just enough of a telltale to give Foxy some pointage for sympathy. As for being cute, while Foxy seems more cool than cute, the hiding behind the curtain thing allows him that cuteness. Though Foxy has earned points in different locations to his fellow animatronics, balancing the risk and reward, he unfortunately winds up with Freddy and Bonnie at 5 points. As sympathetic and beloved as Foxy may be, his vicious bite and noticeable odor means that his kiss would be unpleasant to only those who weren't totally taken by his plight. Though with dental care being what it was long ago, kissing Foxy might at least smell similar to kissing a real-life pirate. Now, we have the mysterious Golden Freddy, and immediately I question whether or not he should be disqualified due to his hallucination status. Most of the time, Golden Freddy appears more as an apparition than an actual suit. We will count him for a suit for now and continue. No lips, can he bite? Being a limp suit who kinda just shovels around, he ironically might not be able to physically bite. In his jump scare, he just shoves his face in, but doesn't seem to make any munching motions. Again, we're talking about Golden Freddy, not Fredbear, so I would say that he cannot bite. Though will he? Golden Freddy in later games seems to be portrayed as aggressively as the other animatronics, so I would say yes, especially in his appearance in Ultimate Custom Night, as possibly the overseer of what's going on, and in FNAF AR. Now, toxins and hazards. This one's kind of tricky. At some point, there was likely a body shoved inside of him, but with his current state of teleporting around and possibly being an apparition, he might not have any remains left in him. However, it is believed that poltergeists can leave a foul odor, but we haven't been privy to that, so I'll say no smell likely, no immediate hazards. Sympathetic? Well, we don't know much about Golden Freddy, but if Ultimate Custom Knight is trying to imply that Golden Freddy is the one keeping Afton coming back and keeping the souls trapped, then yeah, no sympathy points there. Finally, cuteness. Look, I'm sorry, but Golden Freddy just isn't cute. From his empty eyes, to his gaping mouth, to his disheveled appearance, nah, no cuteness awards here. I would give Golden Freddy a 4. Golden Freddy's questionable demeanor ruins what may be a less rancid interaction, and his dead-eyed stare is sure to make any kiss awkward, especially when the mouth you're trying to kiss might not even be there. Now let's move on to FNAF 2 and a brand new batch of animatronics. Starting with Toy Freddy. While initially an overlooked animatronic, Toy Freddy became a joke when he was turned into a stand-in for a raging gamer, only to then get a slew of more innocent and polite-sounding lines in FNAF AR. Talk about an identity crisis. No lips again. Can he bite? Well, sort of. With how Toy Freddy's mouth is shaped, his bite would likely be harmless. But he could bite, and that plasticky shell could probably hurt a little bit. But will Toy Freddy bite? So, Toy Freddy has been shown being just as aggressive as everyone else, but there are a few caveats in Ultimate Custom Night and FNAF AR. In Ultimate Custom Night, he gives you the option to help him and he won't jump scare you if you do. A generous offer if we are indeed playing Afton. While in FNAF AR, while some of his lines are borderline sinister, a lot of them are jokey and playful, with one even sounding remorseful. So I think Toy Freddy should only get maybe a half mark for aggression. Toxins and Hazards by all intents and purposes, Toy Freddy seems to be clean and well-kept, so no obvious hazards. Sympathetic? Well, it kind of depends on which version of Toy Freddy we're discussing. Ultimate Custom Knight portrays him as a salty gamer, so that's not very sympathetic. But FNAF AR portrays him as a bit oblivious, so that kind of is. And cute? Yes, I'd say Toy Freddy is cute. So in total, Toy Freddy gets a whopping 7. 7. Toy Freddy got a 7. But he deserves it. 
While a smooch with Toy Freddy would be more than a little awkward, he would probably thank you afterwards and not nip your lips on purpose. Toy Bonnie Toy Bonnie is the self-named superstar in replacement of Bonnie as the bassist, just as eager to hunt you down, but not too hard to trick with a mask. Has a strong chipmunk accent. No lips. Can he bite? He can, and with his mouth that looks a little more painful than Freddy's, would he bite? Well, he's not only the first to come after you, but his FNAF AR dialogue varies between him bragging about himself and threatening to take you out in few short words. So, yeah, he means to attack you. Toxins and hazards? No, Toy Bonnie looks well taken care of and clean. Sympathetic? Ah, uh, no, again, his dialogue is all, I'm a superstar stuff, so we can assume he feels pretty good about himself. Is he cute? Yes. Toy Bonnie's score is 4. This comes from his more notable aggression and his braggart personality. Toy Bonnie is the type of person who you would kiss, get your lips pinched, and then he would wink and say, How does it feel to be kissed by a star shining as bright as me? On to Toy Chica, Chica's lean, upgraded form who has likely stirred confusing thoughts and many a patron. I'm sure there's plenty dying for a peck from Toy Chica, but you may be dying for it. No lips, but she does have a unique beak mechanic that we have to discuss. Toy Chica removes her beak to attack, which may suggest that the beak is harmless. That is, if Toy Chica was going to bite you, she would have to remove her beak, and while Toy Chica's beakless mouth looks scary, it is largely molded in place, so unless you pucker your lips inside, she can't bite you. Also, she will try to bite you. Her dialogue makes it very clear that Toy Chica is the likeliest animatronic to lure you in with the promise of a smooch and then try to bite you on the nose. Like the toys before her, Toy Chica looks clean and pristine, and there are no notes or messages indicating that she has classic Chica's eating problem. Any specific quirks? Nah. Is she cute? Technically, yes, when she has her beak on and her eyes in, so full credit. Toy Chica gets a 5. You might be enticed into a kiss with Toy Chica by sweet words and come-hither gestures, but she is definitely setting you up to try to bite your face off. Thankfully, she doesn't exactly have the means to do so. Now on to Mangle, the broken remains of Foxy's replacement left in shambles in Kid's Cove. In a shocking first, Mangle has lips. Two points for that alone. But can they bite? Yes, Mangle has one of the deadlier bites as well, in FNAF 2. And Mangle seems just as aggressive as anyone else, especially in their AR dialogue, which depicts them as threatening to come disfigure their victims. Any hazards? Well, I would say yes. In this case, not from dirt or rot, but because of the poor state of their body. Getting close to Mangle alone is a hazard. On to the sympathy card. Mangle definitely is worth feeling for. They have been treated poorly by Freddy's, abused by kids, and their wild behavior is directly suggested to be caused by this trauma. Finally, are they cute? Mangle barely scrapes by on cute, even though their body is distorted and twisted. They still have a cutesy face, so I think it's still worth giving them at least one point. Mangle gets a 6 on the smoochable scale. Due to their traumatic backstory and the presence of lips, you might be tempted to smooch the fox. Just know that the fox has been through a lot and might take the opportunity to give you a quick makeover and leave you looking just like them. Next is Balloon Boy, and the first of the Gremlin class of smoochable animatronics. Gremlins, due to their sizes, get head smooches. Their rank is adjusted accordingly. Head smooches automatically get a point for having lips because they don't need lips for you to kiss their head but the bite gauge kind of turns into like a danger gauge. And unfortunately, BB has a little propeller on top of his hat. Not only a possibility for accidentally poking out your eye, but he might also shift just enough to poke on purpose. And would BB bite you if he could? Well, actually no. See, while Balloon Boy is depicted as a problem child, he is never directly attacking the player, just stealing batteries, opening vents, with the only outlier being FNAF AR, where all the animatronics are equally aggressive. Though because of his consistency beforehand, I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say that BB is not usually aggressive, just a pain to deal with. Any hazards? No, he looks pretty clean. Any sympathy? No, no sympathy for Balloon Boy. Is he cute? Well, his antics might not be cute, but he fits the criteria. Balloon Boy's score is a 7. That ties him up with the King of Kiss, Toy Freddy. But don't expect a BB kiss to be too pleasant. 
I think you'll feign innocence and you'll lean in closely, press your lips to his forehead, and then he'll turn and his propeller will stick directly into your eye. Then he will laugh. The marionette, the noodly mime thing from the prize counter who used to be a major character. Does marionette have lips? Yes. Can it bite? Nope. No sign of teeth and the mask mouth is frozen. Would it bite? Well, the puppet is depicted as being just as aggressive as the other animatronics, though in one line in Ultimate Custom Night, it seems to imply that they've got a specific target. The puppet is also shown to be the one giving life, so I like to think maybe there's some form of compassion there, especially when it claims that they, being the other animatronics, are under its protection. So, I think that's enough to give it at least one point, maybe. No hazards, it's squeaky clean and wobbly. Sympathy? Yeah, lefty. Getting trapped in a battery-operated bear trap is sympathetic enough. Finally, is it cute? Adorable. So that leaves Marionette with a whopping 11 points. I'm totally shocked and absolutely thrilled that my favorite animatronic got such a high smoochability rating. I'm sure once you figure out how to kiss that open mouth porcelain and velveteen smile, it would be pleasant. Just as long as you're not Afton adjacent. Now on to Withered Bonnie, the withered remains of a leftover Bonnie. His face is gutted and his decimated body left to rust away in the back rooms. First off, no lips. But on the other hand, no possible way to bite either, because he has absolutely no mouth. Though, would he if he could? Yes, while Withered Bonnie's lines make him seem a little more chill, he's just as willing to attack as the others are. Unfortunately, due to his hazardous state, he has the same problem as Mangle in the getting close is a risk department. But due to this state, he is brimming with sympathy for his unfortunate plight. Alas, and one last cruel twist, Withered Bonnie has lost his cuteness. This makes Withered Bonnie's total a healthy five. That's pretty good for someone with no face. You'll have to kiss the rim of his mouth and make a quick run for it before he can grab you with his good arm. Next is Withered Chica, Chica's part-stripped counterpart who looks more like a nightmarish Pez dispenser than a functioning animatronic. No lips and, uh, I don't know if Withered Chica can even bite. Her mouth seems frozen in this gaping maw, and her jump scares don't show her closing it at all, so let's say she can't. However, would she? Yes, like the other Withers, she's quite aggressive, likely due to her broken state. She's also a walking hazard, with wires hanging from her hands and the mouth situation. I would also give her the same sympathetic buff as Withered Bonnie, and while she does have her big eyes, the garishness of her sunken sockets and the state of her mouth erase any cuteness factor. This leaves Withered Chica at a 4, just below Withered Bonnie due to her exposed wiring pushing up her hazard factor. Smooching Withered Chica would be all around uncomfortable. You would have to wait until she's stuck in a vent, sneak up on her, peck her on the edge of her mangled mouth, and hope she doesn't fall out and crush you to death. If not for the sympathetic factor, she would be beneath Chica, where she arguably deserves to be. Withered Freddy is the next of the Withers on the line. Once the face of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, now a shambled heap of spare parts whose only moments in the spotlight are when he rolls into frame on the backstage cameras. No lips again, but this is the first of the Withers who actually has potential biting power in his semi-functioning jaws. Though to his credit, his mouth is that same plushy state as the original Freddy's, so I'll toss him a bone in the benefit of a doubt with having a weaker bite. Withered Freddy, too, is just as aggressive as the others, though his state of disrepair is much less severe. There seems to be some loose wires on his leg, but that might be far enough out of the smooching range to nudge him out of a hazard point. Though he does take the hit on his sympathy points, where, while he was scrapped for parts, he is looking generally better than the others. And is Withered Freddy cute? Big eyes, bare face, I think he deserves a cute score, at least he deserves the same score the original Freddy got, because he looks relatively similar. This leaves Freddy with a 5, a reasonable score paired up with his bunny companion and the original models. What he lacks in sympathy he makes up for in stability, but he does have a bite risk, so try to give a quick peck and bolt. Ignore the smell of mildew and don't look back if he starts staggering after you. You cannot help him. Withered Foxy is the last of the Withered animatronics, a mere shadow of the pirate he once was. He haunts the halls with an even more shuffled gait. 
no lips and an especially deadly bite, and will bite. His level of hazard, however, is not to the degree of Withered Chica, and he's more in the same state as Withered Freddy and in the sympathy department. And since he holds a strong resemblance to classic Foxy and his face is mostly intact, he gets to be deemed cute. That would be a functional four. Smooching Withered Foxy is a mistake you make when you wanted to always kiss Foxy, but you pull up to the pizzeria years after he was decommissioned. It's extremely dangerous and musty, but at least he looks somewhat like Foxy the pirate used to. So you've probably noticed so far that a lot of the scores are consistent and in the same range, with somehow Classic Bonnie and Withered Bonnie getting lined up at the same rating. Well, enjoy this while you can, because we will soon be moving into some really nasty kisses. The ones you pull back from with half of your face missing. Also, it helps that the Withereds might not actively smell like rotting bodies. They probably smell old and musty, but they don't reek that bad. Now, to finish off NAF 2, we've got JJ, Balloon Boy's female counterpart, our second gremlin-sized animatronic to deal with. A point for a head kiss. Uh, one point for possible eye poke since she is mischievous like he is, and two points more because unlike Balloon Boy, JJ is depicted as less aggressive. In FNAF 2, she doesn't even do anything. In FNAF Ultimate Custom Night, she's mostly just a pest, and she doesn't have any jump scares across the series. No hazards and appears to be in clean condition, though no notable reason for sympathy either. And she's cute. That's a pleasant 8 points. JJ is basically like kissing a nicer Balloon Boy, and it feels nicer too because you're likely snubbing Balloon Boy to do it. Now we move on to FNAF 3, where we would painstakingly go through each of the Phantoms, or we would if they weren't disqualified. While the Phantoms have rankable aggression and presence in the series, they don't seem to be tangible beings that you can smooch, vanishing if you get in contact with them in any way. In this case, they cannot be in the smooch rankings. That doesn't necessarily give them a zero, it just means they can't be smooched. So we'll move on to the actual animatronic featured in FNAF 3. The Purple Man himself trapped in a prison of his own making, rotting and decaying away behind a wall. You already know how this is going to go. Springtrap the Sprung Trap. No lips can bite, but I will give him credit in saying that it's not a very effective looking bite. As nasty as his open mouth looks, it's hard to fit anything in there when there's already a head in there. Will he bite? Oh yeah, this man killed half of his patrons. He's a menace. Hazard? Yes on that too. He is an exceptionally rotting body in a decaying suit that sat behind a wall, cask of Amontillado style, for a couple decades. Not only does he reek, but kissing him will likely give you dysentery. No sympathy for the purple man. Is he cute? No. Springtrap gets one point, as he should, because if you really think about it, from the mouth shape to what's going on inside to the backstory, you do not want to kiss the stinky rabbit. And if you do, he'll probably kill you afterwards. In fact, you might assume him standing there staring at you as an invitation for a kiss, and then lean forward, only to have him snap your neck. The only reason he gets that lone point is because of his defective mouth, and because against all odds, I know people who would probably want to kiss him. On to FNAF 4 and the Nightmares. Now, Sister Location hints that the Nightmares are actual animatronics of some kind, so we will treat them as such instead of writing them off like the Phantoms. Because you might want to kiss these guys. But I will be covering this section a little quicker because I will be repeating myself. Nightmare Freddy is the first nightmare we will be looking at. The assumed leader of the group, or at least of the gaggle of Nightmare Teddies hanging off of him, apparently Nightmare Freddy reproduces by budding. No lips and a horrific mouth of sharp teeth, and he's very capable of biting, with the assumption being that he's willing to mangle a small child, charming. Due to his teeth and his claws and the fact that he's carrying dozens of frettles, his hazard is through the roof. He is not sympathetic and he is not cute. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you our first zero. There is no reason to smooch Nightmare Freddy. Even his personality leaves much to be desired. But what about the Freddles themselves? The garish gremlins hanging off of and out of Nightmare Freddy. They automatically get a point for a head kiss, but their teeth makes them especially dangerous. Due to their size and the fact one on its own would be less of a threat, one point for Hazard seems fair. No sympathy points, but I do think the Freddles deserve at least one point for cuteness. Garish or not, they are tiny, and tininess does tend to relate to cuteness. 
so the Freddles get three points. If you have to smooch something, smooch the babies, not the host bear. Now on to Nightmare Bonnie. If there's much of a point. Like Bonnie has all of Freddy's issues, Nightmare Bonnie has all of Nightmare Freddy's. With one exception, without the Freddles, Bonnie's body is a little less threatening, even with the claws. So, I would think it's applicable to give him one point for less hazard. Actually, no, I think I'm just going to zero him out too. I just cannot validate not having children as equaling a point. Nightmare Chica is the Chica equivalent of the Nightmares, obviously. This spicy chicken falls somewhere alongside Nightmare Freddy and Bonnie. No lips, vicious bite, will bite, and where Bonnie almost got a waning hazard because he didn't have freddles. Chica has a Nightmare Cupcake who basically is a freddle. No sympathy, no cuteness, no points. Now on to Nightmare Foxy who isn't quite the dreamy pirate you might be thinking of. No lips, plenty of teeth, yada yada, but Nightmare Foxy has something that makes him especially foul. This. This sharp-pointed, unholy, lengthened tongue protrudence that looks perfect for stabbing you through the back of your throat. Nightmare Foxy should get a zero on that alone, because putting your mouth anywhere near that thing is a crime against nature. Though it does bump his hazard high enough to earn that zero. Then there is Nightmare Fredbear, based off of Fredbear, the bear who crunched the crying child's head during a misaligned smooch. This Fredbear is no more favorable to kiss. First of all, no lips again, then a mouthful of sharp teeth, not just on his head but also on his belly. He can bite from both sides. Major hazard, no remorse, no sympathy, and no cuteness factor. Fredbear deserves his zero, because kissing him is like kissing a bear trap without the possible perk of being in the woods. But what about Nightmare, who looks pretty much like Nightmare Fredbear? Well, you might be surprised, but Nightmare gets a higher score, because he is disqualified. In the Nightmare mode he appears in, if you turn up the brightness, you can see that Nightmare is like a hallucination or an illusion around an endoskeleton. And even though we could probably compare smooching this bizarre Nightmare endo instead, I think the fogginess on the whole ordeal makes it a little too speculatory to make a call. Nightmare is, at least, intangible enough that you can't smooch as advertised. Basically, any of these Nightmare animatronics would be like kissing a blender, and none of them have distinct personalities to make them enticing. It's no wonder that they're bottoming out. Jacko Chica and Jacko Bonnie are pretty much Nightmare Chica and Nightmare Bonnie on fire. You know how you accidentally bite into something you just microwave too quickly and burn your tongue for a week? That, but most of your face. Next up is Nightmarion, Marionette's nightmarish and garish cousin, and don't be surprised if he's not as up to smooching. Technically, he does have lips, but he also has a mouthful of teeth. However, we don't see Nightmarion biting, and we don't know if his face is frozen, so the teeth might not be as dangerous. Any hazards? Well, Maybe not. Other than those teeth, Nightmarion's body might look funky, but there's nothing outwardly risky to touch. The sharpest things are his ribs, and I still don't think touching them would immediately cut you. Is he sympathetic? No. Is he cute? As much as it pains me, I'll say no, because if I say yes, it is definitely a puppet bias. Nightmarion gets five points. I think that's especially generous for a licorice monster with tentacle fingers. Just mind the teeth when you lean in for a smooch. And guard your neck, you never know when one of his fingers will just wrap around and start strangling you. Now we're looking at a non-nightmare edition of FNAF 4, the Plucky Plush Trap, Springtrap's version of a freddle, but whose daddy still hasn't gotten back with the milk. Plush Trap is a far cry from Springtrap, though, both because of his sizing and his lack of a rancid corpse inside of him. Plush Trap is a gremlin, which means he gets a head kiss. However, he's prone to biting with his sharp teeth, so he could probably just look up and bite you while you're leaning in. He's a finger trap, but he could also very well become a lip trap. And Plush Trap is also surprisingly aggressive. However, he is small, and his mortal enemy is carefully timed flashlight shines, so only about half the danger. And like I said earlier, while Plush Trap looks like Spring Trap, he doesn't have his noxious interiors. In fact, while he's a little in disarray, I wouldn't say that Plush Trap has any hazard outside of his teeth. Sympathy? Not really. Cuteness? I would say that Plush Trap just tips the scale enough to get some cuteness points. This gives Plush Trap a reasonable 6 points. Smooching Plush Trap is like smooching an angry chihuahua. 
I don't know why people would want to do it, but they do. And there is some amount of charm to it, I'll admit. That charm is all but evaporated in Plush Trap's counterpart, Nightmare Balloon Boy. Imagine Balloon Boy, but he has turned from a gremlin into a deformed cretin with a Pez dispenser head. Yes, I used that comparison for someone else, but it really fits in this case. And don't get me started on his fingers. Technically, he is a gremlin, so we can give him a head kiss, giving him a point, but once again, he has the propeller, and we know for a fact this BB is out for malicious intentions just from his lines alone. So I don't think the propeller is our only risk. I think Nightmare BB might snap his head back at the last second and suck us into his circular row of lamprey teeth. So, yeah, dangerous and aggressive. Though for hazards other than those teeth, I could only give a point if I'm stretching it for the hands, because elsewise his stubby, stumpy body isn't dangerous, and he looks clean enough. Not sympathetic, and no, while he meets the criteria of big eyes and a colorful face, Nightmare Balloon Boy is not cute. In something that I can only consider a crime against nature, Nightmare BB does not get a zero, but a two. And that's stretching it too, because look at his hands. With that, the nightmares are over. But we still have a long, rocky road ahead. Now, at the request of a friend, for some reason, Virtua Freddy. Who is Virtua Freddy, you may ask? Well, Virtua Freddy is a secret character from FNAF World. Sort of. Basically, if you summon a Mimic Ball, a stubby little guy who mimics the mo moves that you use, it does so through a virtual holographic green Freddy. So Virtua Freddy would be a hallucination or an illusion, and the real character would actually be the Mimic Ball. Mimic Ball is a small guy, so he fits into the gremlin category with a kiss on the top of the head. He is harmless, doesn't seem hazardous, doesn't seem sympathetic, and is moderately cute. Six points. Next from FNAF World is Old Man Consequences, the red creature hunkered down by a lake in the depths of FNAF World. Old Man Consequences is disqualified, because to get a kiss from him, you would have to effectively trap yourself in purgatory with him. No kiss is worth that, especially not when the kisser has this mouth. On to Sister Location and the star herself, Circus Baby. Don't let the soft appearance fool you. There's something terribly wrong with Baby, and you would do best not to trust her gentle words. But, is she smoochable? Right off the bat, Circus Baby has lips. Is she capable of biting? Unfortunately, yes. Her face plates can draw back to reveal a mechanical mess of endoskeleton underneath. However, since Baby's plotting goes beyond simple bites, I'll only give her one point here. But don't mistakenly assume Baby isn't dangerous. She is. But Baby's plans come before that, so you could probably get a smooch in, especially if she thinks it'll help her gain your trust. On that front, maybe one point of aggression if your survival is vital for the moment. Hazards, well, Baby does have a claw on her belly, but she only uses it to attack children. I would say her general demeanor is pretty hazardous for your health. Is Baby sympathetic? Well, yes, she is. Baby has been tortured and used by Afton Robotics, she has been trapped in a situation she cannot escape, and that does make her sympathetic though her behavior makes it a little hard to feel all that bad for her, being cold and manipulative. And is she cute? Yeah, I'd say Baby's cute. And I bet you're wondering, why is Baby not on the gremlin list if she's so short? Well, I have a shocking revelation for you, but she's a whopping seven foot tall. Big Baby indeed, but I digress. So Circus Baby actually gets an eight. I think that's a little generous considering how dangerous Baby can be if you let your guard down, but like I said, I think you could get a smooch in if you play your cards right. Of course, that would be kissing a 7-foot clown with a metal-plated face, but you could do worse. We've seen plenty examples of doing worse. Next up is Ballora, the lovely ballerina with a habit of twisting herself up and crawling around like a spider. Ballora has lips. Ballora also has the ability to open up her face plates and reveal a disturbing face underneath, along with a catfish-looking mouth full of needle teeth. Now, unlike Baby, Ballora is shown in Sister Location to go after you even though it is against the goal of using you as a suit, making Ballora much more aggressive. She's not going to let you smooch, and she has the means to bite you. Otherwise, though, her body isn't exactly hazardous. Sure, she can contort herself, but she doesn't have any hidden weapons, and she seems rather clean, so that deserves full points. Is she sympathetic? Yes, like Baby, she is trapped in this horrible place. 
shocked and torn apart and treated like an animal. And unlike Baby, whose manipulative behavior makes her less sympathetic, Ballora isn't that sinister. Yes, she will try to kill you, but there's no twisted alternate motive beyond vengeance for her own treatment. So, full point seems fair. Is she cute? Well, I'd say Ballora isn't cute per se, in fact, I'd find her downright creepy. But she is pretty, so I'll give her those two points for that. It would be a crime not to. Ballora's score rivals Baby's at an 8. What she lacks in approachability, she makes up for in sympathetic backstory and a pretty face. Smooching Ballora, if you get close enough, will be the closest you get to kissing a metal human. And as long as her face doesn't open up, it might not leave you second-guessing your life's choices. Next is Funtime Foxy, the reworked Foxy for the band, stripping his pirate accent for a more showman-like voice and demeanor, but expect him to still be a hunter. They have lips. Will they bite? Yes, and they have an especially disturbing split to their face that would give them an exceptionally harsh bite. And they seem more than willing to bite. Other than that, like Ballora, Funtime Foxy is clean and the only hazard they hide is their gaping maws. He has the same sympathetic backstory as the others, but groups more with Ballora's behavior than Baby's manipulation. And he is cute enough, so full points on that. Funtime Foxy cleans up with a healthy 7, which seems more than appropriate with his threatening jaws. A smooching with Funtime Foxy would involve smooching the tip of their snout and hoping it doesn't pop open into some sort of scary mechanical jaws connected to a gumdrop-shaped wireframe head. The next neck on the chopping block is Funtime Freddy. Don't let the whole rounded bear thing fool you. Funtime Freddy is a shrill-voiced sadistic creature who takes too much pleasure out of what he does at any given time. No lips and definitely has the capability to bite, with his opening face giving more room for a thick jaw ready for crushing. But would he bite? Oh yeah, Funtime Freddy is the type of person to crunch all your fingers and toes, laugh at you, and then go in for the kill. How about hazards? Well, Funtime Freddy does have a hidden storage tank for capturing children in, and he also has his hand puppet, Bon Bon, who can detach and attack for him, or who we might just, you know, launch across a room. I think the double whammy can count for at least one hazard point. Is Funtime Freddy sympathetic? He should be, having the same backstories as the others in Baby's Band. Except Funtime Freddy's sadistic and sinister nature makes it almost impossible to feel bad for him. Even more than in the case of Baby, whose terrible behavior is almost directly equated to the hand she was dealt. Funtime Freddy is even more cruel than her. And as for cuteness, well, I regret to say that Funtime Freddy is technically cute. Which means that Funtime Freddy's smooch score is a 3, but don't get any funny ideas. A smooch with Funtime Freddy just gives him the chance to get his hands on you, or hand on you, and once that happens, who knows what he's going to do. Likely try to either shove you into his child-sized stomach tank, or just beat you over the head with Bon Bon while crackling manically. It's not worth it for a smooch that's like kissing a refrigerator. But speaking of Bon Bon, Freddy's hand puppet, is he any more smoochable? Well, let's see. One point for the head kiss, gremlin size. He's capable of biting, but his bite looks much less threatening, so I'll only give one point. Will he bite? Yeah, he pretty much does whatever Funtime Freddy tells him to, so I would classify that as aggressive. But hazardous? Not really. When separated from Funtime Freddy, Bon Bon might be quick, as he doesn't have much going on for him, but his bottom is spared of any exposed wires. Sympathy? I'll give him one pity point for being stuck with Funtime Freddy, and then a few more for being a cutie. That's a tidy seven points for the little guy. A far cry from Funtime Freddy. If you could just get the bear out of the picture, a smooch atop Bon Bon's head might be possible. Just make sure to hold him from the underside and pull back quickly if he gets nippy. Bonnet is also a very similar case. In fact, Bonnet is quite literally just to recolor a Bon Bon with Funtime Freddy usually not in the picture. So to make a long story short, imagine the exact same scenario, just you may not have to get Funtime Freddy out of the way for a head smooch. For that, Bonnet gets a 7, because even though she's not Funtime Freddy's primary hand puppet, she does seem to get stuck with him occasionally, and that warrants a pity point. The mini Renas are Ballora's little ballerina helpers. They have molded mouths that resemble the puppets, except that they are actually hollowed out which means not only no teeth, but no capability of biting whatsoever. But that doesn't mean they're harmless. It's not made entirely clear if they're working directly under Ballora or if they have their own agenda, as in most of their appearances they are 
distractions instead of aggressors, with the only exception being Night Forest's sister location when Ballora is standing there. I suppose I'll just go ahead and give full marks for aggression, though. They are clean and tidy with no exposed wires or sharp bits. I wouldn't give sympathy points, they tend to giggle excitedly when causing mischief, so they're not having that bad of a time. But they are cute. The mini arenas would also get a 7, except, well, in the Fazbear Frights books, which tend to be a little odd in general, their starring story features them forcibly climbing into someone's mouth and lodging themselves into his body. Somehow. While I doubt the mini arenas are going to open someone's mouth and hop inside during a smooch, a smooch on the head might give them ideas. For that, I'm going to have to dock them down to a 5. You will kiss a mini arena on the head and hope that they don't get any funny ideas, then spend the next two weeks sleeping with a face mask out of paranoia. Now on to the Bitty Babs, babies' variations of the mini arenas. Shown only a few times, these bald little babies are shown to be nearly as aggressive as Baby herself. Kiss on the head. Now, unlike the mini arenas, Bitty Babs do have these little ventriloquist mouths, and as such, they technically could bite if they got enough of an opening to do so. So between the flat teeth and the small bite coverage, it would be a weaker bite. At worst, a bad pinch. The Bitty Babs are also quite aggressive, capable of jump scaring on their own and hunting their victims. No hazards being clean and rounded, without even a sharp edge. Nothing sympathetic about them, save a cut line saying, don't hold it against us, you don't know what we've been through, but that was cut from sister location for some reason. I suppose it's not technically canon. I would classify them as cute. This would give the Bitty Babs a healthy 6. They're kind of like a smaller JJ in a way, just with a higher risk of damage. Kissing the top of their heads would likely be harmless, but they might bite at your fingers and bolt right afterwards. Now the Electro Bab, a Bitty Bab made with the ability to drain power and thus given their names, are a weird story. They are virtually the same as the Bitty Bab, but we are unsure if, due to their connection to electricity, they might be capable of shocking you. If they are, then I would drop them to a 5 due to the risk of getting a jolt. Elsewise, they're the same as Bitty Babs. Now we get on to Lolbit, a recolor of Funtime Freddy, who is usually portrayed as a face on a computer screen and only as their own character in one level of Help Wanted. This puts Lolbit's tangibility up in the air, along with their personality and ability to attack. Because of this, I think I'm just going to disqualify them because I don't think there's enough evidence here to clarify whether or not you'd be smooching a computer monitor or not. Now, Yendo is a little more tangible. A yellow-eyed bear endoskeleton that physically appears as a cameo in the Funtime Gallery when you're crossing it. Sort of a large Funtime Freddy Yendo that's possibly connected to Fredbear or Golden Freddy, i.e. the name Yendo, Yellow Endo. Endo does not have any lips and does seem to have a harsh bite. While his teeth aren't especially sharp, he has a large metal jaw with no padding or protection. Now, is he aggressive? That's a little more unclear. It looks like Yendo has the chance to attack you in the Funtime Auditorium, but doesn't. But he will jump scare you in the Sister Location Custom Night. So, half mark. Is he hazardous? Yes, he has nothing but exposed wiring and plenty of bits that look like they could pinch or snare a limb. Sympathy points? Well, we don't know much of anything about Yendo, so no. Is he cute? Nah. That would give Yendo only a single point, and I think the reason for this is because, if you think about it, Yendo is pretty much Fredbear without his skin, and we know exactly how well smooching Fredbear with his skin went. Plus, the lack of a distinct personality doesn't exactly help make him more enticing. Kissing Yendo, if you could pin him down, would be like, well, kissing a worse Fredbear. Now we're on to the last character of Sister Location, Entered the Amalgam, a mass of wires vaguely in the shape of a human and with the features of a clown dropped on top. The big bad and final boss, here he is. Alas, Enner did not inherit Ballora or Funtime Foxy's lips. He also has a row of sharp teeth and a face that opens, making him seemingly dangerous. But would Enner bite you? Well, actually, likely not. See, Ennard's master plan is to get you into the scooping room so he can get inside you, so he would be less likely to damage the face. So, safe smooch. But, uh, Ennard is quite literally nothing but exposed wiring, and with the whole scooping room thing, yeah, Ennard's a walking hazard. But he is quite sympathetic. He too is trapped down here, but in a worse state and with no chance of escape. It's been out before but it is always broken up and put back eventually. 
Whether we see Ennard as a hive mind or a culmination, he is a clown who exists in a state where he can never attend a birthday party. He will never be a true clown. Is he cute? Well, he has eyes and a face, so like Mangle, um, yeah, he's cute. So that leaves Ennard with... I'm just gonna give Ennard an 8. Smooching Ennard would be like kissing that tangled up mess of computer cords that you've left behind a dresser for so long that it has ensnared that scary clown doll that Grandma brought you one year. And instead of, you know, trying to do something about it, you decide to risk the danger of your health and smooch it. Is that a spark of something more between you? Or are you about to go into cardiac arrest? So moving up to the pizzeria simulator era, we've got Helpy, a little Funtime Freddy-esque helper and mascot. Unlike the character Encyclopedia, which paints him as the second coming of the Prince of Darkness, Helpy is just a cute little guy who, admittedly, might not exist. But since he appears in Ultimate Custom Night, we'll act like this little guy's the real boy. In the Gremlin class, Helpy gets a nice head smooch, and it is a perfectly safe head smooch. Two points. He is never shown to hurt anyone. In fact, you can say that Helpy's trying to help you in Ultimate Custom Night when he fires off an air horn. Maybe trying to keep you awake? Okay, a stretch, but he's still pretty harmless. He's clean and his limbs are all stubby and safe. Sympathetic? Admittedly, no. Maybe when he falls in a minigame failure, but he gets back up and is okay later on, so I'd maybe only give him one point just for the shock of it. And is he cute? Adorable. This gives Helpy a resounding 10, and no wonder. One day, when Helpy's helping out, he accidentally gets banged up testing out the unsafe attractions at the pizzeria. You pick him up, brush him off, and give him a little smooch on the head. He thanks you politely and excitedly goes back to work. Perfection. Now on to the trash gang. I know I should do them one by one, but I don't think it's necessary. And I know there are likely not really functioning animatronics and are instead maybe hallucinations brought up in Ultimate Custom Night, or just rigged up dummies in Pizzeria Simulator, but they are physical trash, so uh, supposedly we can smooch them. They do not have lips, but they also cannot bite. They do not hurt us. Their only flaw being that they are made of trash, so a slight hazard risk. Are they sympathetic? I'd say no, because for what we know they aren't even sentient, so they likely don't feel pain, or anything at all. Are they cute? Well, yeah, okay. So the Trash Gang as a collective unit acquires seven points. For something comprised of garbage with googly eyes, these guys have got a pretty good score. You could kiss each one, but they would not feel it. They would not respond, because they are inanimate objects. And once again, your heart breaks. Now let's move on to the mediocre melodies. Freddy's offshoot cousins, starting with the peppy happy frog. Happy Frog is effectively the chica of the group, the soul girl and the happy camper. Happy Frog does not have lips. Though she has a big mouth, it seems rather harmless. In fact, she seems rather harmless. Maybe ignoring Ultimate Custom Night, considering who we're playing as and the fact that she might be possessed, yada yada, Happy Frog is never a real threat to the player or anyone else in Pizzeria Simulator, especially since she's not listed as having a liability risk in the catalog. She's also clean. Nothing sympathetic about her and cute. Well, I'd only give her one point. In her lines, she sounds bubbly and energetic, which is a rather nice change from the threatening animatronics, but it seems like that could maybe get old rather quick, depending on how energetic she is. That gives Happy Frog a nice seven. Kissing Happy Frog is like kissing an oversized stuffed animal, except that it might get a little too excited about it and talk your ear off afterwards. I think you will find that most of the mediocre melodies benefit from cleanliness, friendliness, and a low liability rating, even if they're not, you know, the most popular animatronics. Such as Pigpatch. Pigpatch is a banjo-playing pig who likes to muse on proverbs in his spare time. Pigpatch almost squares up exactly with Happy Frog. The only difference would be that Pigpatch seems a little more calm and refined than Happy Frog. But I do feel like the constant proverbs with the banjo riff would get annoying in their own way. 7. Pigpatch is someone you won't want to kiss. Not because he's a pig, but because he is pretentious. Pigtentious. Next we have Ned Bear, Freddy's goofy looking cousin and the only mediocre melody with a liability rating. Likely because he's depicted as a klutz. Everything goes the same as before, except he does get a half point for danger because he's very likely to fall on you at some point. 
He's also not exactly the most appealing animatronic. So I think a six is pretty generous. A net bear kiss would be punctuated with a yuck and him stumbling a little, maybe looking for another smooch, falling right past you and flopping face first onto the floor. Then you would have to stand there awkwardly as Happy Frog and Pigpatch help him back up. You'd think this would get some sympathy points, but no. But there is someone whom we might feel sorry for, and that's the surprisingly beloved rambler known as Mr. Hippo. He'll talk your ear off for hours, but if you really listen, you'll realize how tragic his stories truly are. Same thing goes, except no liability risk, and he should get a sympathy point. But not to, because he's a little long-winded and nobody's a saint. I'm certainly not. That would be eight points. And Mr. Hippo smooch isn't that bad. It's like smooching a friendly old grandpa who's been telling you stories. He probably won't stop talking the whole time, but that's why you kiss him on the head and get out while you still can. The last of the mediocre melodies is dear old Orville the Elephant, a friendly old magician elephant. I'll skip the pretense and give him an eight. He doesn't have Mr. Hippo's sympathy, but he is especially cute. A smooch with Orville would be like a reward for a little magic trick. He gets a smooch on a cheek, thanks you politely, and pats you on the head. Then he asks if you liked his act. You did, because his entertainment level is high, which means he's probably very good at it. Now we move out of the mediocre melodies and into the other band of Pizzeria Simulator, the Rockstar Animatronics. Rockstar Freddy is the first up to bat. No lips, can he bite? Well, technically with his mouth and harsh shell, he could. But would he bite? Well, yes. So remember how I mentioned that the mediocre melodies got a pass on their aggression in Ultimate Custom Night, at least somewhat? Well, Rockstar Freddy is different. Rockstar Freddy demands coinage to not attack. He gives no impression that he cares who's in that office, as he can be paid off by a measly five coins. So one can only assume that anyone he tries to bum change off of is at a risk of being attacked. That's dangerous. In his defense, he is clean and new, but him demanding money is entirely unsympathetic. Sure, he's asking politely, but he repeatedly asks, no, demands for money. Is he cute? Technically, he should get full marks for cuteness, but do you know what's not cute? Extortion. That would be a five. Five coins. Five coins he demands for you to pay before he'll consider a smooch. As you take out your hard-earned cash, you think to yourself that he's taking the fun out of this. He thanks you and lets you smooch. His lips are like hard plastic, devoid of passion. Rockstar Bonnie is not nearly as money-hungry. This crooning rabbit seems to speak entirely in song, at least from what we hear, and is seldom seen without his guitar. No lips. He does have a plasticky mouth that could possibly bite, but unlike Freddy, he is much less likely to do it to some random person. He's clean and well put together, not sympathetic but gets full cute marks. I don't necessarily find him cute, but the appeal of a sultry voice luring you in with love songs feels like it should get a point somewhere, so I'll stick it here. That's a nice seven. Rockstar Bonnie would send you swooning with a romantic ballad, enticing you to come in for a smooch. And while it would be safe, it would too be like kissing a big plastic mouth. Next we have the Maraca shaking Rockstar Chica, a fiery bird with a taste for barbecue. And would you believe it, but Rockstar Chica has lips. Huzzah! Dangerous mouth? Well, a little. But she, like Rockstar Bonnie, seems harmless when working in a normal pizzeria. She's clean, low liability, not exactly sympathetic, and gets a half point on cuteness. I don't necessarily consider her cute, and between you and me, her abrasive character might be a little too much for some people. That would give her an 8 on the scale, which is rather generous, I feel. There's not much horribly unappealing about Rockstar Chica, but I just don't think she's one who one would choose to kiss. Rockstar Chica is absolutely the type of person who would let you smooch her and then immediately smack her beak and go, Mmm, tastes like chicken. You would not return for seconds. Now on to the final rock star of the group, Rockstar Foxy. Rockstar Foxy is a largely friendly fellow who's willing to help you out if you're willing to help him find his parrot companion. No lips and a mouthful of teeth that look like they could be dangerous, but a rather low liability and an amount of friendliness. No distinct sympathy, but rather cute, especially with his buddy Parrot. That gives Rockstar Foxy a 7. To get a smooch with Rockstar Foxy, you first have to win over his bird with crackers or hope it flies close enough to grab it. Rockstar Foxy will offer you a reward. You choose a smooch and kiss the plastic mouth, somewhat wary of the teeth, but in no danger. 
It's an okay kiss, but it takes a little work to get to. With the Rockstars done, let's move on to the other MISC animatronics in the pizzeria before we go on to the main attractions, starting with Music Man. It is a crime against nature that anyone would consider kissing Music Man, but let's look at how he should technically rank. Unfortunately, Music Man has lips. You can see the thin lines around that broad grimace. Those are lips. As uncomfortable as a mouth looks too, it doesn't seem to move, making it a safe mouth, but would Music Man bite if he could? Yes. See, Music Man is aggressive to anyone who makes too much noise or tries to show him up, as portrayed in his Ultimate Custom Night lines. Behavior like that could become dangerous and is also rather obnoxious. It should be noted that apparently Music Man can spawn with a high liability rating in Pizzeria Simulator. I don't know if that depends on whether you buy him or find him in a ball pit. Also, he hangs out in the ball pit. Long story short, Music Man is a danger and you should not kiss him. But he is clean and he doesn't have any immediate hazardous bits, no sympathy, and no, he is not cute. That gives Music Man a 6. A 6. Somehow Music Man gets a 6. That's higher than the classic animatronics. It truly is a cruel world. Even with 6 smooch ability, the kiss with Music Man won't be fun. You'll never feel comfortable under that gaze of those giant soulless black eyes, and lips or not, you're kissing him directly on the teeth. Make sure to do so quietly so he doesn't have a reason to smash his symbols over your head. Now we move on to El Chip. El Chip is a mascot of El Chip's Fiesta Buffet, and he's, his only reason for being featured at Freddy's is to advertise his own brand. Though that doesn't mean he's a bad guy. In fact, he seems like a pretty chill beaver compared to the original Chipper, who had some, um, questionable behaviors. El Chip has no lips, but his mouth isn't quite built for biting. And he wouldn't bite. El Chip has a low liability and virtually non-existent aggression. He cannot jump scare. He is clean and in good condition, not really sympathetic since he has his own business and does his own thing, and seems relatively cute. That gives El Chip a well-earned 8. El Chip is totally smoochable. Unfortunately, there's a chance he's only smooching you so that he can get his name in the papers. All publicity is good publicity, especially when he's proven that he's much safer than Fredbear in one single motion. Though again, plastic mouth, it's like kissing a slide. Funtime Chica is admittedly one of the animatronics who people would probably want to kiss the most. And I don't just mean because of her curvy physique. She's a far cry from the malicious fun times built to capture and kill. Instead, a bubbly and harmless chick who revels in being the center of attention and performing for an adoring audience. Funtime Chica has lips and a less than concerning mouth, especially in her more animated form in Ultimate Custom Night. She has no liability and isn't aggressive, using her time to pose for the cameras, gushing happily as she does so. She's clean and well put together, there's nothing really sympathetic about Funtime Chica since she seems more than happy and confident with who and what she is. And is she cute? She's adorable. That gives Funtime Chica a rousing 10, but I'm going to give her an 11. Funtime Chica is just such a breath of fresh air. She's pleasant and pretty and pink. A smooch with Funtime Chica would probably be nice. She leans down and pecks you with her beak, gives a sweet giggle, and calls you Cupcake. Now we have Candy Cadet. Candy Cadet is the storyteller of FNAF, regardless of what the books may tell you. This is the robot telling the stories. He gives it to you straight, well, steeped in metaphors, but he doesn't sugarcoat his tales of terror. He does give you a piece of candy at the end, though. Candy Cadet doesn't have lips. In fact, he doesn't have a mouth. But that also means he can't bite. Which he wouldn't. Candy Cadet is depicted as completely harmless. The only thing he can hurt is possibly your feelings. But if you can't handle his harsh stories, well then, that's rough, buddy. He's clean with no sharp bits. I wouldn't necessarily call him sympathetic, but it is clear Candy Cadet knows too much about the horrors of Freddy's. That deserves a sympathy point. Then, lastly, is he cute? He well, he doesn't have a face, but he is colorful and has cute little antennas, so at least one cute point. That gives him yet another eight. You might have to sit through a disturbing story to get a smooch, but you can be sure that he won't bite you, maim you, ask you for money, and might give you some candy afterwards. Alright, with all these guys out of the way, it's time to head into the depths and take a look at Freddy's dirty little secrets, Daddy's little monsters, hiding in the tunnels beneath the Pizzeria Simulator Pizzeria. We'll start with Scrap Baby. Scrap Baby is what remains of Circus Baby. Abandoned by her band and left to piece herself together with trash, Baby is a threatening sight, but also a tragic one as well. 
She has fallen off her stage and now lies on rock bottom in a dirty alley behind a pizzeria, amongst others thrown away by society. Scrap Baby still has lips, even though some of the paint is wearing off. I think she deserves a half point because they're half there. Baby also has a rather dangerous mouth. While it moves like a ventriloquist dummies in an up and down motion, it's partially broken and full of sharp teeth. Very dangerous. And she will bite. Baby's more manipulative behavior has fallen apart as readily as her body. She's out for blood, and she will attack. She is also unfortunately a walking hazard. Stray wires, broken and sharp bits, and a giant claw literally in hand at all times. All this aside though, I feel especially sorry for Scrap Baby. That's not to say that she doesn't deserve her fall from grace, but she is currently in a really terrible spot, and she doesn't even know it. Now, this one is a push because Baby, by all means, shouldn't get a point on the cuteness scale, but I feel like I want to give her one. Maybe not for cuteness, but coolness. I personally think Scrap Baby looks really cool, from the roller skates to the wild glowing eyes. One point should do it. That leaves Scrap Baby with a four. Scrap Baby is a walking hazard. You may want to offer comfort, but as you lean in for a smooch, you feel that claw close dangerously on your neck. Your life is now fully in baby's hands, hand, and this baby is not so keen to play the long game with lives as she once was. Now we move on to Molten Freddy, the remains of Ennard. Unfortunately, in the process of shedding baby, somehow he lost his legs and became this pile of wires that occasionally resembles a bear. A heap of sharp parts, which should cue you in immediately on how this will go. No lips, dangerous bite, a cruel and aggressive demeanor that radiates Funtime Freddy's, not even a walking hazard, a crawling, slinking hazard that waddles around looking for someone to torment. Sympathy is... hard. See, I feel for the fun times in general, but Molten Freddy is predominantly Fun Time Freddy, the most unsympathetic fun time because of his highlight character traits and how much he enjoys tormenting and torturing his victims, taking a maniacal thrill out of it. I'm giving him one point, but it's a stretch. And Molten Freddy isn't cute. I can't even squeeze out a point like I did with Baby on this one. So, that's one point. And that seems fitting. You might like Molten Freddy, but you would do best to avoid smooching him. It would be more beneficial to just kiss a trash can. At least then you'll be able to walk away without getting tangled and strangled in a mound of metal spaghetti. Now we move on to the big bad of FNAF. The devil- The de-evolution of Springtrap. Afton, commonly known as Scrap Trap. God help whoever wants to smooch this man. I begin this evaluation with the tragic realization that there is a small line of fabric around Scraptrap's mouth, and that is, unfortunately, a pair of lips. However, he does still have a dangerous mouth. Even with the deformed faux bunny look, there's no denying the sharp teeth, even if he may struggle to get a good bite in. And he would, of course, he is a serial killer who has all but willingly chosen to look like this, so yeah. He's also extremely hazardous. Not only does he have exposed wiring all over, but there is at least a partial skeleton inside of him, also exposed, likely carrying all sorts of diseases from the decaying process. No sympathy, he's right where he should be. And no cuteness factor. I mean, look at him. Look at him. From this, Afton gets a 2. This hideous display actually gets a higher score than Springtrap and solely because he technically has lips. They're not even functional lips. This is the worst possible outcome. There is no justice. Finally, the last character in the four true threats, Lefty. Lefty is a walking bear trap built to trap the puppet inside. It is unclear how much of the puppet is in control of this suit, or if there is another force pulling the strings behind its dead black eye. But how smoochable is it? First off, no lips. Its mouth is the same as Rockstar Freddy's, so we'll give it the same amount of points. Is he aggressive? Yes, he is. Don't let the relation to the puppet fool you. He is just as bloodthirsty as the three hunks of recycled building material he's trapped with. Though in contrast to them, Lefty is a newer model. There are no loose wires or sharp pieces, no indication of any smell or decay, so not an immediate health hazard. Sympathy? Well, sympathy kind of depends. If Lefty is truly possessed by the puppet who has been trapped inside them, then yes, he deserves full sympathy. This is truly a horrifying fate, to be stuck in this thing around these people. If Lefty is a separate entity, then no sympathy. I will be rating it as though it is the puppet and giving full marks. Is it cute? Mm, I gotta give it a half mark. Technically, Lefty looks like a fully functional animatronic, 
but that blackened eye and dead stare make him remarkably unsettling. That gives Lefty a 6. There's only two reasons you would smooch Lefty. Either you're trying to comfort the puppet inside of it, or you want to smooch Rockstar Freddy and don't want to pay the fee. Either way, it would be... awkward. He would give you a dead stare. You say something. He shushes you. You, for some reason, take that as a go-ahead and slowly lean forward and plant a smooch on its plastic lips. It does not respond. You pull back. He stares. You leave fast. It is not your puppet anymore. Never again. Never. Never, ever, never. Help Wanted introduced a few new animatronics. Let's see how they fare on the smooching spectrum. Starting with Dreadbear. Have you ever considered smooching Frankenstein? Well, we are now because Dreadbear is basically just Frank and Freddy. His personality is rather non-existent, but what he lacks in that he makes for up in... Uh, Dreadbear has no lips, he has a big wide mouthful of flat teeth, and while they are not as sharp as some of the others we've seen, I could see him crunching through a skull. And he would. While we see nothing of Dreadbear's personality, we do know he is aggressive and eager to seek out a new victim. Now, I'm only going to give him a half mark on Hazard because while he has sharp claws, the decayed state of his suit looks less to be real decay and more like a design decision. I don't think Dreadbear's actually moldy or anything of the like. I think he's designed to look like that. Sympathy? Well, I actually think Dreadbear should get a point on that. There's a mini game where you pretty much bring him to life and then nearly torture him in the process of getting his brain in working order, complete with controlled shocks and the like. That is pretty sad. Alas, I wouldn't say Dreadbear is cute. I'll give him a I'll give him a point only because I found this Christmas poster which gives him more personality than in the entirety of his starring role. So Dreadbear's smooch ability number is 3. I think that's fair. Dreadbear is built to be scary and it is by design that he is a monster on the hunt. So you shouldn't try smooching him. But if you insist, wait until he's strapped to his table, make sure he's in a passive state, and maybe try to avoid the mouth altogether. Edge of the head, nose, cheek, avoid the chompers, you're good to go. Next up is Grim Foxy, who is basically a bigger and badder version of Jacko Chica and Jacko Bonnie. No lips and a full mouth of razor sharp teeth, he's shown to be aggressive, he is currently on fire, and is carrying a large rusty scythe, and is willing to use it and shows no means of sympathy and isn't cute. But I'm still going to give him two points because he is just so very cool looking. That's a two for Grim Foxy, which makes sense because you would be smooching a flaming mouth of razor sharp teeth while dodging a scythe swinging at your face. But if you survive, even with the scars and burns, that would be one hell of a story to tell. It's worth kissing Grim Foxy just to say you kissed the living embodiment of a flaming barrel of shrapnel. But if you want, perhaps, a less aggressive and exceedingly dangerous fox to smooch, look no further than Captain Foxy. Foxy but in a spiffy new captain's coat, and seemingly with a whole new brand. Captain Foxy doesn't have lips and does warrant wariness for his mouth of teeth. However, Captain Foxy is largely harmless. Depicted as running his own dark ride, at least in Help Wanted, Foxy will only jump scare you if you get a zero. Or if the numbers roll over 9,999 due to a glitch, which under most circumstances you would be pretty unlikely to get. So I think Captain Foxy is quite safe. He's not hunting you, he just wants you to play better. Even with some holes, Foxy looks cleaned up in his new costume, with his bare legs and the lingering tears in his chest likely being more for show than actual deterioration. Is he sympathetic? Well, he is stuck on a dark ride, so maybe a one. That's kind of a stretch, I know, but uh, Foxy deserves it. He's been through a lot. He is also very dashing in his new Captain getup. That gives Captain Foxy an 8, a major improvement from his old days at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. You'd probably need to warm him up to the idea with a high score on his dark ride, then propose a smooch on your way back around. I'm sure with a high enough score, he would agree. Smooching Captain Foxy would be like kissing original Foxy, except less dangerous, less dirty, and no decomposing bodily fluid leaking out of his suit. The final new character is the newest in the Springtrap, Scraptrap, Yellow Rabbits with Murderous Intent line in the form of Glitchtrap, though he is a far cry from the rancid rabbits before him, instead with an intact suit with an admittedly smart little vest. While his hands do give off the impression of there being a real creep inside that knockoff Easter Bunny, there is no confirmation of there being a corpse inside. With that being said, Glitchtrap would be the most kissable variation of Springtrap, if he wasn't disqualified. 
Yeah, there's no evidence that Glitchtrap exists outside of the VR game he was in. Arguably, Dreadbear and Grim Foxy are in the same boat, but speaking of Glitchtrap specifically, and with his whole deal being that he is a virus, and thus likely doesn't have an animatronic counterpart, I would say kissing him is likely impossible. And he's not the only rabbit getting disqualified. Introduced in Help Wanted and revealed in Security Breach, we have Vanny, the reluctant follower under Glitchtrap's control. Vanny is disqualified because even though she wants to be an animatronic bunny, she isn't. She's just a sweaty human in an oversized sock. It is shameful, not smoochable. So we will instead move on to the actual animatronics of Security Breach, starting with Glamrock Freddy, the beloved companion and helper in Security Breach and a delightful Papa Bear. How does he rank up against previous Freddies? Glamrock Freddy does not have lips. While having sharper teeth on the inside of his mouth, the shape of his mouth doesn't benefit biting, and that would be if he bit, which he likely wouldn't. Freddy is exceptionally friendly, going so far as insisting that he is not capable of hurting anyone, which is believable with his warm disposition. He is clean and pristine, at least in the beginning of the game, and Freddy has a lot to be sympathetic towards. He is so good-natured and yet is trapped in such a tragic situation, under the thumb of a company who may at any time shut him down, yank off his casing, and replace him with a duplicate who doesn't even know he exists. Plus, he is in mourning over his lost friend Glamrock Bonnie. Finally, is Freddy cute? He is not cute. He is downright precious. That gives Freddy an exceptional 10 points. If not for his lack of lips, Freddy would be a very smoochable bear. But you don't smooch Freddy for his mouth, you smooch him for his personality. He may be a little too naive to understand the depths of your smooch, but he would still see it as a very nice gesture regardless, and probably follow it up with a hug if requested. Next, we move on to Glamrock Chica, portrayed in ads as a bubbly, food-loving chick. In reality, Chica more resembles an 80s-inspired zombie, shuffling around and gorging herself on whatever she can get her hands on. That's our Chica, right? Chica does have lips and doesn't have a mouth that would be good for biting, but she is aggressive. Now, whether you want to say this is Vanny's doing and that she's normally nice and that she or that she's like the classics who were able to perform during the day and became aggressive at night, I don't know. So I'm just going to treat her like the other animatronics and say that in this case, yes, she is dangerous. But not just because of her aggression, but also because she is full of garbage. Unlike Chica, who had a habit of eating pizza and leaving it to rot inside of her, Glamrock Chica is actively shoveling trash into her maw and chomping it down. Do you want to kiss a mouth that just finished chewing up a used diaper? Do you? On the sympathy scale, I give Chica some sympathy because it seems like she's not in control of this crazed appetite of hers. Living like this has to be a nightmare, if she can even comprehend it in her current state. Is she cute? Yes. I give Chica a 7, and that is exceedingly high considering the diaper thing. You may think Glamrock Chica is a cutie, and it's worth the dead-eyed stare and possible danger to smooch her. Maybe you can buy a Pizzaplex pass for that. Either way, you lean into smooch, and only then do you realize, when you get close, when she opens her mouth, that she smells like a trash can. And she is a trash can. Next is Monty Gator, a laid-back and cool gator fellow in advertisements. In reality, Monty's got a fierce temper and a habit of tearing through whatever he can reach to sate it. No lips and Monty has a mouthful of jagged teeth, and he is in the vein of biting first and asking questions later. Though when it comes to hazards, I think technically he looks dangerous by design. He's clean, his exterior is intact, he doesn't have Chico's little problem. On the sympathy scale, I'll give him a... a one point. It's clear that the Glamrock animatronics are going through a lot, but all Monty's going through isn't gone through. I can't really make a judgment on it because we don't see enough of Monty. Also, is he cute? Yeah, I would say so. Cute enough, at least. That gives Monty a 5. Kissing Monty is just as dangerous as trying to kiss a gator. You pretty much just have to time it right and you won't get bit. Of course, Monty may proceed to hunt you down afterwards and smack your head clean off, so make sure you have a good exit strategy. Last but not least, we have the Glamrock who, from the get-go, everyone wanted to smooch the most. Roxanne Wolf. From the moment she was revealed, the fan base fell hard. But how high does she rank on the smoochability scale when we take a good look past the cool wolf exterior? Well, she has lips, that's an immediate plus. Roxy's got a maul like Foxy's. No surprise, since she's pretty much his replacement in the band. And she is aggressive like Chica and Monty, hunting just as readily as they will. 
Like Freddy and Monty, Roxy is clean and well put together. In fact, while the group looks dirtier throughout the run of Security Breach, picking up an ungodly amount of filth from around the Pizzaplex, Roxy keeps her hair well groomed and clean as she takes care in her appearance. Which is because Roxy is incredibly insecure and fixated on her own looks, on looking good, on being the best, and when something shakes that image, she collapses. Roxy is arguably the most sympathetic of the glam rocks, though that could also be because she's the only one other than Freddy that gets a moment where we can see her vulnerable. She is also pretty cute. That gives Roxanne Wolf a clean 9, with the only thing holding her back being how dangerous she is, which could perhaps be a compliment in certain avenues. You're going to have to really impress her to get a chance to smooch her, and even then, she's not going to give you the satisfaction of a compliment. You smooch her on the lips and she pushes you back quickly. That's enough, she says, then eyes you as she saunters away, too cool to care. Then she goes back to her dressing room and excitedly brags to herself about how someone wanted to kiss her so much, her ego given a nice pat on the head. Now we move on to the other couple of characters who everyone wants to smooch, the daycare attendant, aka Sun and Moon. Yeah, there's a clear differential between these three, but I'm not here to question anyone on who they want to smooch, unless it's Afton. Now, Sun and Moon are technically a uh, two-in-one, but I'm going to rank them as separately as under the correct lighting conditions, you could probably stick with one of them long enough for a smooch without the other showing up. We'll start with Sun. Now, if you look really closely, you can see that he does in fact have lips. And he has a molded toothy grin, which means he's incapable of biting. But would he bite? Definitely not. Sun is not shown to be aggressive to any degree, which makes sense. He takes care of the little kids. And Freddy's knows what happens when you put tiny children by animatronics that can bite. As portrayed in Security Breach, Sun is pretty patient and even when upset will, at most, ban and put you out of the daycare. Sun is also rather clean, with the only marks being faint children handprints on his back. Is he sympathetic? Yes, very. If the very quick flip into writhing anxiety is any indication, the daycare has probably fried Sun's nerves. And is he cute? I would say by the amount of people who absolutely adore him to the way he's riddled with nervousness and talking about hand puppets and glitter glue that, yes, Sun is cute. This is it, folks. This is the big one. Sun has gotten a perfect score of 12 points. Of course, this score would flip on its head if the lights weren't out, but we'll cross that bridge in a minute. First, let's detail a kiss with Sun. It would likely be more on the teeth than on the lips, but it would be worth it for how flustered he would get afterwards. If he doesn't pretend to faint in an overdramatic clownish display, he might just flutter around there fumbling and stuttering like his head's about to explode. A mind-blowing smooch, a real 12. But what about Moon? While looking very similar to Sun, Moon is a different beast in the same body. Everything with his mouth is the same, as is his hazard, but in contrast, he has a malicious streak and is more than willing to hunt down and jump scare any naughty trespassers. Assumedly. He is also less sympathetic because of this, but I would say that he's still cute in a scrunkly sort of way. Something about the way he bounces around and spins his legs. He's both off-putting and cute. That gives Moon a clean 9, brought down by his gremlin behavior, but all in all, it could be worse. Moon might lure you in with the promise of a good night kiss. You inch in to smooch him. He smooches back through his teeth. Then he grabs you around the middle and suplexes you into a pile of plastic kitty chairs. Banned from the daycare, indeed. Time for the real big deal, the biggest animatronic of all time, who isn't made of numerous animatronics. We're looking at DJ Music Man, Music Man's massive cousin. Though size isn't the only difference between this guy and his smaller counterpart. DJ Music Man has lips, but unlike Music Man, we do see his teeth chattering, and since they are so large and blocky, I think they're intimidating enough to get a danger point. But would he bite? Well, even though the DJ is a boss battle in Security Breach, this is due to something referred to as Bouncer Mode. This mode is listed as still being in development, and the use of such revokes the warranty, suggesting that it is not encouraged to activate it and suggesting that without this new addition, DJ Music Man truly is the nice fellow that Freddy refers to him as. So I'm going to say that he's not actually a danger because of these circumstances. He's clean and put together, not hazardous. You can argue his size is a danger, but he seems adept to walking on the walls and ceiling, so his chances on stepping on someone are probably not too high. 
No real need for sympathy, the DJ seems content in what he does. And for cuteness, yeah, I can't say that I think that DJ Music Man is cute, unfortunately. That gives DJ Music Man a 7, a point above the original Music Man, but arguably a sizably better choice. Smooching DJ Music Man is... let's be blunt, it's like smooching a bus. Now let's take a look at the smaller animatronic, the Lil Music Man. Lil Music Man, looking more like the original Music Man than the DJ, but in a tinier package, is an aggressive little wind-up toy that nests in the vents. A point for a head kiss and chattering teeth are only a meager little threat due to its size. A finger trap, perhaps, but the problem being that it certainly will try to bite. Lil Music Man are aggressive as all get out. They're not in good condition with dirty, broken up bodies though they are in relatively better condition than some of the seriously broken animatronics we have gone through already. No sympathy, and yeah, unlike, let's say, the Freddles, I don't think the little music men can be considered cute. I'll give them a point because they're tiny, but... Uh. Lil Music Man gets a 4. Remember the Chihuahua analogy? That, except it's a tiny spider that looks like Music Man and will eagerly chase and snap at you. You can try to smooch it on the head, but it's not worth it, especially if there's more than one lurking around. They might hunt in packs. In the final stretch of the list, we stumble across the most current rancid rabbit, Afton adjacent corpse in a shell, in the form of Peepaw Burn Trap Afton, an assumed descendant of the mutant fungus that fell off of Scrap Trap during the fire in FNAF 6. The big bad of Security Breach. Or he would be if he showed up for longer than, like, four minutes. Peepaw does not have lips, instead having a mouth of denture-like teeth sticking out of rotten gums and oozing the oil he's lathered up in. He seems to be capable of moving his mouth, so assumedly he can bite. About as well as a human, which is maybe half on the animatronic scale. Will he bite? Yes, he's a killer. His hazard rating is through the roof, need I remind you that he's lathered up in what I can only call corpse grease? Just touching him could put you at a risk of catching a disease. No sympathy again, he's a killer. And cute? Hell no, look at him. That gives Peepaw a reluctant one. In fact, he only gets a one because his chompers aren't nearly as volatile as the Nightmare animatronics. That's admittedly sort of pathetic, but not pathetic enough to warrant a sympathy point. Smooching burn trap? More like grease trap. God, imagine putting your lips on these slimy, greasy teeth, him twitching and rotting, the both of you probably currently on fire, no amount of toothpaste or bleach is ever going to take the taste of decades-old human jerky out of your mouth. Why would you do this? He does not love you. He cannot love you. The final animatronic of Security Breach is less of an animatronic and more of a heap of pieces resembling the mascots of previous pizzerias. A strangely appropriate analogy for Freddy's itself melted into one sleeping, breathing, hulking mass hidden in the dark depths, referred to typically as the blob, the piece de resistance, over bloated innard with Funtime Freddy's head. The blob has at least four heads and one mask attached to his body, and the dominant one does not have lips. What a shame. Can it bite? Yes, and due to its ability to open its face and the crushing power of its jaw, it I'd be hard-pressed to say it doesn't have a vicious bite. It is also aggressive, willing to attack on sight. As for hazards, what part of it isn't a hazard? It's made of nothing but sharp metal pieces wrapped up in thick metal wires and drenched in that same slimy, oily residue that oozes off a peepaw and floods the dank depths of the Pizzaplex basement. Do yourself a favor and don't touch. Sympathy? Well, I suppose I would give it full sympathy points. Because while we haven't received a confirmation on what it is, the blob looks like it's suffering every moment of existing. This is a I have no mouth and I must scream moment here, even with the mouth. And even with Funtime Freddy's head, the puppet's mask, the remains of arguably cute animatronics here and there, the blob is not cute. That gives it a 2. Generous for something that will likely kill you if you get anywhere near it. You would have to talk Freddy into helping smuggle you close, open the hatch, lean out quickly while the blob has its head hung low enough, smooch its slimy metal mouth, recoil back in, and hope to god it forgets you're there and that whatever you just picked up from it can be fought off with antibiotics. It is not pleasant, and it is not worth the trip into the heaping bowels of Freddy's to find it. Now, I will not include the ruined animatronics on this list, because while we can physically see them in the new ruined trailer, we don't see if their personalities have changed, and that is a big factor in the smoochability scale. 
Though I can say for certain that due to their current states, every ruined animatronic is probably going to receive a significant dock in points compared to their original versions. Which means... We have gone through every single FNAF animatronic in the games. We have gone through them all. Except one. There is one left. Michael Afton. Now you're probably saying that Michael is a human, or at the very least an undead creature, and that's true. But he has had so much metal inside of him, he is pretty much a haunted creature, a suit. And I think he's gone through enough that he deserves to be on the list. So how does he rank? I don't need to go through the whole sordid affair. Michael Afton gets an 11. I would give him a 12, but I just can't overlook the hazardous conditions of his body. He might not be entirely human anymore, but he isn't a monster. And he definitely deserves a smooch for all he's had to endure. But, uh, just try to keep it brief, 5 second rule, less chance of cross-contamination. And that is the smooching guide. Now in our final stage of business, we will break down everyone's numbers into this nifty little tier list. We will be going from the worst to the best, but we'll start with those who couldn't make it in. The disqualified animatronics are the Phantoms, Nightmare, Lulbit, Old Man Consequence, and Glitch Trap, because they are all technically intangible creatures. Starting at dead last zero tier, not even ranking on the smooching scale at all, we have the Nightmare Animatronics, Nightmare Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, Nightmare Fredbear, Jacko, Chica, and Bonnie. All of these come from the fact that the Nightmares aren't just off-putting, but extremely dangerous and don't have enough character to make them deserve a smooch. On to the F tier. We have Peepaw Afton, Nightmare BB, Molten Freddy, Springtrap, Scraptrap, The Blob, and Grim Foxy. So many of these animatronics are greasy, contain rotten corpses, or are Balloon Boy. Grim Foxy, the walking death trap, tops the bill because he's pretty cool. Next, we have the D tier. Dreadbear, the Freddles, Funtime Freddy, Little Music Man, Withered Chica, Withered Bonnie, Scrap Baby, Withered Foxy, Golden Freddy, Chica, and Toy Bonnie. Many of these characters are in major disrepair or have similar problems to the nightmares. Toy Bonnie is at the top of the list because he probably actually deserved a 5. On to the C tier. Nightmarian, Withered Freddy, Rockstar Freddy, The Mini Renas, Freddy, Bonnie, Monty Gator, Foxy, Toy Chica, Music Man. I cannot believe Music Man ranked above Toy Chica. Mangle, The Biddy Babs, Ned Bear, Lefty, and The Mimic Ball. These are really just the middle of the road smooches. Many of these fellows or dames are dangerous. Some, like Mangle, get further ahead out of sympathy. Others, like Music Man, get ahead because life is unfair. The Mimic Ball gets the highest billing because he's just a cute little guy. B tier. The Trash Gang, Balloon Boy, Plush Trap, Bon Bon, Funtime Foxy, Bonnet, Pig Patch, Happy Frog, Glamrock Chica, DJ Music Man, Toy Freddy, Rockstar Bonnie, Rockstar Foxy, Candy Cadet, Rockstar Chica, Circus Baby, L Chip, Mr. Hippo, Orville, Ennard, JJ, Captain Foxy, and Ballora. It should come to no surprise that Ballora is the most smoochable animatronic here, but shockingly, it was sort of a tough decision deciding these. To be fair though, even with her danger rating, Ballora really is, out of all of these animatronics, probably the closest thing to kissing another human, so there's that. Now on to the A tier. Moon, Roxy, Helpy, and Glamrock Freddy. All of these guys put up a really good fight, but it was Glamrock Freddy's friendly nature that made him the most smoochable of the lot. Now on to the top tier. S-tier smooches. Michael Afton, Marionette, Funtime Chica, and the most smoochable animatronic of all time, the Sun. Though I suppose that if we did have the estimate of Sun and Moon together, that the winner would have actually been Funtime Chica. But that aside, we have the most smoochable characters, folks. Here they are, and a full guide of which animatronics you should and shouldn't smooch. I hope that this video has enlightened you on how... Unpleasant, it would be kissing most of the cast of FNAF. A bucket of ice water over the head, perhaps, but anywho, I thank you for watching.